Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Welcome to this uh, <clears throat> webinar we are hosting alongside uh, Sipin. Uh, today, we would like to discuss on a number of issues regarding innovation, uh, regarding all these uh, uh, nice developments we've seen across shipping, we would like to discuss how emerging technology is powering a safer maritime future. Uh, with a rise in high profile maritime incidents, costing ship owners and managers massive amounts in damages, the industry is looking forward toward new technological solutions to improve safety, security, and operations on board, looking towards sustainable shipping and operational excellence, among other things. And uh, we've seen that digitalization is coming at the, at the top of the, of the priorities of the agenda of the discussion, as we've seen these days, along with uh, issues of decarbonization and of course, sustainability. And technologies like artificial intelligence is already available today and beginning to be deployed in ships around the world. While the transition to a more tech-driven maritime future isn't always easy, it is rapidly becoming a key differentiator uh, for leading fleets today. And the benefits are enormous. We've seen people across the industry uh, moving forward, uh, promoting best practices, um, allowing for the, you know, the leaders to move the industry forward. And we've seen a lot of collaboration, collaboration being uh, the fuel in these days, is the new fuel, collaboration is the new fuel. That's a, a nice, uh, uh, let's say, uh, motto I heard recently. We've seen a lot of collaboration across the industry over the, the last years. And I think uh, the pandemic has uh, been a catalyst towards uh, more and better, let's say, collaboration across the industry stakeholders. So we've seen increased efficiency from maritime technology that has the potential to dramatically reshape the entire supply chain, adding trillions of dollars to the global economy by 2030. So we would like to discuss in this webinar safety and security challenges in shipping industry in 2022 and, and beyond. We'd like to discuss emerging tech and uh, artificial intelligence trends in maritime and the impact uh, to operations. We would like to discuss uh, strategies and probably return on investment of real-time uh, uh, visual data. We'd like to discuss how to improve uh, ship safety and how to improve life of people on board. We'd like to discuss how successful technology uh, integration in maritime will help better determining risks and claim handling uh, for insurance uh, to improve operations and, of course, to, to, to improve safety. And uh, among other things, of course, uh, drive profitability, among other things. Uh, to have this discussion, let me introduce you to our panelists. We have assembled a panel of experts, uh, a rounded panel of experts, I would say. Uh, we have uh, Captain Inad Matre, who is the Managing Director of Zibon uh, in Singapore. Have Colin uh, Gillespie. Colin is the director of loss prevention uh, uh, with the, the North of England PNI Association Limited. We have Dr. Maurizio Pillo, who is the managing director of Safety Tech Accelerator, a subsidiary, uh, an organization related with Lloyd's Register. We have, uh, and last but not least, uh, from our sponsor, Osher Perry, who is the chief executive officer and co founder of Shipping Systems. Gentlemen, I would like to welcome you all to this uh, discussion. And I would like to ask you by giving us uh, your, let's say, opening statement, your initial thoughts before we have a deep dive uh, with, with, an, with a discussion and, and a number of questions. We would like to hear from you. Uh, let's start with Captain Nina. Uh, hi, Apostolos uh, and uh, other gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much for uh, the introduction. Uh, so can all of you hear me properly? Yeah, okay. So. Uh, you know, shipping has always been a very backward industry. It's always been a very reactive industry. And in today's time, what we feel is that there is a growing change, uh, which is that mainstream technology, including emerging technology, is for the first time coming into shipping and uh, changing the way we do things in shipping. Uh, it's mostly, largely for the betterment of shipping. And I think that uh, with this, uh, like Apostle said, the collaboration part, uh, this is going to make it very interesting in the coming days. 
uh, the collaboration on this technology is not happening just on in terms of safety, but in terms of machinery, data collection, vigilance, security, accident investigation. So this technology is allowing us to uh, do what we did earlier in a different way and in a way that is concurrent with current with with the present times and the challenges that we face so i think we'll talk more about that but i for one i'm very glad to be part of such a discussion which is promoting basically the acceptance of such technology into shipping thank you captain and uh, colin your thoughts uh thanks apple well I at North, in, in my day-to-day -day work, I see a broad range of technologies that either are already being brought into use by owners or indeed uh, are being pitched to us by various tech providers, perhaps through, you know, Lloyd Safety Tech Accelerator. Uh, what we see is sometimes the tech has been developed for another industry and somebody's seen a purpose for it in marine and they, they move into a space in marine that they think their tech fits and sometimes it's a bespoke product that's been developed particularly uh, for marine uh, sometimes they're niche applications they they're you know they're identified a problem and they're there for that specific problem and other times there are things that can be relevant to the wider industry and to most ships uh, uh, but what's obvious to me is that the, the tech solutions that, that we're seeing can help ships be more efficient more effective and safer I mean, there, there's no doubt that these technologies can help there. And I, I think the trick for ship owners is to uh, identify which tech adds most value to their organizations where they have concerns around safety or operations or just where they have a desire to improve and make things better. And, and that that's really quite tricky because there are lots of different technologies out there. So knowing which one fits your company is difficult. but definitely the tech is there and the tech will become a bigger and bigger part of everything ship owners do thank you thank you uh colin uh maurizio what are your thoughts good afternoon and good morning and good evening um my name is maurizio piro and uh, founder and managing director of Safety Tech Accelerator, which is a non-profit um, established by uh, Lloyd's Register. Um, now, um, today's meeting is about safety technologies, and I guess uh, what, uh, the clue on what we do is in the name, right? We are Safety Tech Accelerator, so uh, this is really our day job. And uh, our mission is um, is to really make make the you know industry better safer more resilient through adoption of uh, emerging technologies so that's what we do in in, uh, in the tech, uh, safety tech accelerator and we um, we focus on uh, maritime especially but we also work with other sectors construction for example mining that gives us a very unique perspective about how different industries are trying to adopt uh, safe safety tech um now um through my role of working with many companies, uh, many clients uh, in shipping in particular, uh, many technology companies, I, have a, I think myself and, and my team, we have a unique perspective, many stories, many world stories to tell from, from, uh, from all sides of, the, of this ecosystem. And I think, um, um, you know, the conclusion is that adopting technologies is very hard uh, in general. And in maritime, even harder than many other sectors because of, uh, you know, the, the nature of the sector and its compliance-driven as opposed to risk-driven. Um, um, and um, and so our our approach, and I think what we found works best, is actually working hand in hand and really trying to understand exactly what problem uh, we are trying to solve and really uh, guide technology companies to really. Um, understand uh, the problems in much more depth. Uh, there is a tendency some, sometimes, and I agree with Colin, in fact, many companies coming from other sectors don't really go deep enough to understand the nuances of the maritime sector. And so sometimes uh, technology companies and clients speak different languages. So basically what we discover through dozens of interactions of, of, of this type is that 
um, the process of adoption needs to be very curated. Uh, it's not enough to just throw technology over the fence and hoping that somebody says, yeah, I want to try that. And that's, uh, I guess we are going to touch on this point again, uh, but the potential that we see is, is very, very large. And uh, so that's what I'm going to share today. My contribution today will be sharing some of the stories that we are picking up from our interactions with maritime companies and tech companies. Okay, thank you, Mariju. Posse, your thoughts? Certainly. Uh, hello, everybody, and uh, Paul, thank you for having us. Um, very briefly, as an opening kind of uh, uh, description and background to um, you know to this discussion from from our perspective. So, personally, I've I've spent about ten years of my life in in the high seas uh, on board vessels uh, navigating uh, um, uh, oceans, and then I spent uh, a similar amount of time in technology companies in other industries, right, in agriculture and in manufacturing and even in mining uh, for some time, all with machine learning tools for these, what you would say, legacy industries. And so after those years, it, it, was, it became apparent in an, also an interest specifically to, to uh, marine and to vessels to bring those two experiences together and to get, like, together. And with um, the co-founder of the company, Ilan, the CTO, we established shipping to, we say, provide a digital bridge between the ships and the shore. So the focus here, and I think it goes back to the points that everybody, you know, the, the, my colleagues on the panel have mentioned, all of them, is that you have solutions in other industries, whether it is the manufacturing, whether it is automotive, whether it is uh, uh, construction, uh, that have, you know, industries that you can say are a few years uh, a bit ahead of, of maritime, but that's not enough to just take a solution and just jump it over to the ship because there are specific barriers, specific challenges uh, to that environment. And so in shipping specifically, from day one, we've focused on bringing people that have the expertise and the domain of navigating vessels of being in the industry with leaders in the space in machine learning, computer vision, enterprise software, because we feel like it's needed in the industry, those two legs. And you know, I think that the result, and we speak about it, is the ability for the first time to have the owners, the managers, the crew sharing the same information at the same time and improving the performance across the board in the fleets. So looking forward for this uh, fruitful discussion. And uh, again, thank you for the opportunity to uh, share our thoughts. Thank you very much, Josep. Um, now, I would like to, to start our discussion. The beginning uh, point could be none other than asking our panelists here to uh, uh, give us uh, their thoughts on what is the key safety and security challenges that the shipping industry is facing and how technology may be of assistance. So that's the starting point. Let me have your thoughts. Uh, Colin, your thoughts on this on this topic. Thanks, Apo. That's quite a big topic. Um, uh, I think in terms of safety challenges, the safety challenges today are really the same as they've always been. We we see the same things happening for the same reasons over and over again. Perhaps less these days, but they, they, they're still the same thing. So, so for me, the challenges are around keeping the people themselves uh, safe and healthy, and particularly in encouraging and promoting safety behaviors on board, okay? And I, I think that that area, there's a lot of scope for tech, um, wearable tech to, to monitor people's health, and indeed, um, you know, uh, in Internet of Things and visual tech that can help owners and the people working ashore see what's going on on board the ship and collaborate with the people on the ship to to make the 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 operations more effective and safer and better for the people's health. There are also um, some challenges that are unique to sectors, for instance, fires stemming from things like misdeclared cargo in, in container ships. And there's lots of tech uh, companies coming into that space and trying to provide better tech in terms of um, detection, control, uh, extinguishing those, those fires. So there's a lot going on, quite a lot going on in the fire space space at the minute. In terms of security, piracy is still a bit of a problem, uh, as is trading in or near an area of geopolitical instability, of which there are many these days. Uh, so tech that can perhaps give owners early warning in, in, in those spaces is, is of value. Thank you, Colin. 
Uh, Maurizio, your thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, I second what Colin uh, said, uh, so I don't want to um, sort of repeat them. I, I wanted to add maybe um, a slightly different angle where technology could help, and it's uh, human error. So, um, and human related uh, risks. Um, we know that 80% perhaps of all accidents and risk events are due one way or another to some human error or fatigue you know, and things like that. And so this is a very broad church of, of use cases. And um, I think that technology can help in so many ways. I mean, computer vision is an example. You, 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 you mentioned behavior calling and yes, it's about training, but maybe it's also about preventing and, and spotting dangerous situations. Um, it's about helping with uh, safe handling of, of equipment and, and so forth. So the, 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 the number of use cases around human error and assisting humans, I would say, to avoid those errors is, is very, very large. And, um, and the impact on safety could be quite, quite, quite tremendous. And the, the beauty about this is that there is quite a lot of tech coming from other sectors that could help. And computer vision in particular, OSHA, of course, is one of the prime technologies for this, uh, but it's not only. Um, we have wearable, we have voice mm -hmm. recognition and many other technologies, emerging technologies that could really avoid those, uh, those avoidable uh, mistakes that cause uh, sometimes pretty serious accidents. That would be my, my, my top one. If I may add one thing though, is actually, again, not a particular area of risk, but um, safety challenges and risk challenges that also have a strong business rationale. So where the, um, the value of adopting the technology goes beyond improving safety, but also efficiency and, and, uh, and, 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 and bottom line. Those are the opportunities where adoption is ripe at the moment. So companies are, I think, looking for solutions right now. So both safety and efficiency combined together with one, one particular tech solution. I, I fully agree with you. We should move towards that end, but I have a follow-up question for Colin. Uh, as we, as we, but let let me hear from you because we've seen, you know, that reality in many cases is is challenging. You know, the financials, but we'll we'll come to that. Um, also, your thoughts um, on key safety and security challenges and how technology may be of assistance. Certainly, um, I'll start by saying that look when. When we, when we have navigation issues and incidents on board the vessels, usually the crew is being seen as the fault. When we have maintenance related issues, we usually point the finger and saying what was done wrong, what, what, what happened? So the crew is at fault. When we have drug, drug smuggling on board, we put the blame and saying, is there collaboration, collusion in terms of the, what is the crew, right? If there are cargo issues, damage is the same. Nobody also about personal injuries and so on, right? The fact is nobody is getting up in the morning and saying today is a good day to get uh, to get injured, yeah? Or to, uh, you know, so th these are hardworking seafarers that are waking up in, very, you know, to work, extremely motivated in very difficult conditions, especially over the last several years, right? And so I think when we talk about the challenges, let's take it a bit a higher level. And we say, what is the overarching <clears throat> issue in the industry? And our perspective is that when we can all recognize, I think it's a fact, that the ships over the last two decades have gotten significantly bigger, right? And then if you compare the percentages of the increase of vessel and percentage of the increase of the crew size, you'll see a very significant mismatch, right? The ships are getting bigger, the crew is getting smaller. And so then let's ask ourselves, have we provided the right tools to the seafarers to do their jobs in a safe and productive way, our perspective is that we have not. And so this is what we've established, what we've, we're bringing forward as one of the providers, one of the technology companies that are coming and saying, there is a way for automation. There is a way to reduce the burden 
from, you know, people, just as one example, people talk to me about like moving from manual logs to digital. What is digital? You write it on a logbook, then you go to the computer, you add it a task, you type it, and then you need to send it to this organization and this company and this superintendent and all that stuff, right? All of this needs to be automatically detected and seamlessly distributed, sharing of knowledge. That is what is, I think, the role of the uh, maritime tech as a whole. Overcoming the challenges that the industry has in carrying 90% of the world cargo, which is the numbers of the, the trade is just, you know, they just keep increasing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Captain Ina, your thoughts? <clears throat> yeah, so uh, I would just like to give a different perspective that, um, you know, this past few years, the pandemic has uh, created a slightly uh, different situation. So previously, we used to visit our ships very regularly. And uh, the superintendent or somebody from the ship, uh, from the office, <clears throat> always used to go to the ship and uh, check how was the condition of the ship, what was the uh, problems of the crew, and try to help in this matter. COVID has essentially uh, stopped travel. And now we have this situation where there is a disconnect between the ship and the office. And uh, I think one of the things that we see is that this lack of oversight needs to be corrected. And I think in that technology can help. Uh, one of the solutions is uh, having CCTV uh, systems or monitoring systems. Also automatic data collection systems from the ship. So this, uh, in my opinion, this is what would be true digitalization where we uh, don't uh, burden the crew with routine mundane tasks, but we improve their productivity by giving them access to technology. And I think uh, those uh, this disconnect between the office and the ships will get uh, reduced and the oversight of the ship will increase if we use this new technology which is available. We can talk more about that later. Okay, I have a follow-up question for Colin before we move to my next topic. Uh, I would like to ask, we've seen in the past many cases where people have been extremely hesitant to invest in new technology innovation because they feel very relaxed sitting next to a healthy premium, an insurance premium. So in that sense, we've seen you know, insurance, which shouldn't be competing with a solution in the market because someone might say, instead of you know, an, uh, implementing an innovation towards I mean, improving safety, reducing fires, improving, let's say, the health of the crew, reducing fatigue and so on and so forth, saying, yes, I have a premium, I have insurance for that, so this is cheaper for me, why should I go, you know, uh, the other way? Colin, your thoughts, it's a trend we've seen across the industry, your thoughts uh, about that, what have you seen uh, from your clients and what you've seen across the industry? Um, one of the first questions we always get, Apo, is what will it mean for premium if I do this? If I spend this money to do this, will I will I get a reduction in, in in premium? And the answer the answer in the past always been well no because insurance follows your record, and if your record improves, your premiums will will get better. I I think there, we're starting to see a change in the insurance industry where insurers are willing to experiment. I think we, we'd be some insurers are are willing to to experiment. And if owners are going for a, you know a technology that you know the insurers really do think can can produce change, then 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 they will perhaps you know run a run a trial with them to see if it actually works. So the, the, there is a bit of a change going on in insurance. Then it's still always the stock answer is well no because your record follows. But it, you're starting to see you know people are people going well actually you know there's probably something in this let's let's run a trial okay thank you now uh, my next topic uh, would be around uh, uh, barriers and drivers uh, we've seen across the industry with respect to safety technology adoption uh, Maurizio uh, your thoughts what sort of barriers and drivers you see with people willing to implement and move forward with the innovation um, yeah sure thank you um, so like in any sector for any technology, the status quo is probably the biggest barrier. So why should I change, right? 
And uh, in a sector like maritime, and very traditional and so forth, uh, cost conscious, uh, the status quo is the major barrier. So any, anyone trying to sell technology has to really justify why they're improving on the status quo. And it's not just about the ROI, but other, other factors. So status quo, a major barrier. Um, also, um, I see quite a lot, and please feel free to disagree. Um, uh, there are, um, people think there is a second and third mover advantage. So essentially, why should it be me trying this new tech first? You know, why am I taking the risk and the cost? I'll wait for other people to prove it first. But that creates obviously a problem uh, sometimes where many very promising technologies are struggling to get those pilots to really prove themselves. Uh, the list of barriers is very long, but um, I would like to pick uh, two in particular. The ROI, um, I've, seen it, I've seen it from so many technology companies pitching uh, potential clients that they just ignore the ROI. They just don't justify the return on investment. And that's quite difficult if you're not an insider in maritime. Well, it's difficult if you're a maritime insider. If you're an outsider, it's impossible to do it. And I'm, you know, it's almost a call to action for, for industry to be able to find a way to articulate ROIs for certain technologies better, because it could be a big, um, a big enabler for technology. And uh, then also the tech has to be right. I think several people mentioned that, Osher mentioned that, Colin mentioned that the tech has to be right. Um, so uh, many technologies now, especially emerging tech, uh, they come from other sectors. They, uh, at the generic level, they're very similar, right? But they come alive where they, they really try to nail a problem very, very precisely. So sometimes the tech isn't just right. And when people look at it, they say, well, it's not ready. I mean, you think it's ready, but I don't think it's ready. So that's another, if you like, barrier to adoption between a, a tech entrepreneur and, and, and the potential market. In terms of drivers, if I can mention one, um, I, would, I wish I could mention regulation as a driver, but uh, regulation is probably lagging the potential of technology. That's again, another call to action for regulation to, to, to start uh, catching up. Um, but I think um, one of the main drivers is this uh, appetite to move maybe beyond just doing compliance in maritime. You know, obviously it's a sector very driven by a compliance uh, based approach. and, and and many, many clients are starting to think about managing the risk more proactively in real time, being data driven and so forth. So that appetite is very visible at the moment. Um, so this moving beyond compliance is one of the major drivers, but again, it needs to be articulated better in terms of ROI and benefits. And that's one of, one of the things we do at Safety Tech Accelerator, of course, is really trying to get to the bottom of all these use cases for technology yeah. adoption. Yeah. Uh, the list is very long, but I'm going to stop here because... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but we also are just like to add to what you said. We have to also bear in mind there are sectors within shipping. I will specifically would like to name the cruise sector where the driver is not regulation, it's not compliance. The driver is operational excellence and among other things, profitability, because they have to uh, manage thousands of people on board and without technology, they cannot do it properly. I mean, but again, that's, we have to accommodate for that specific sector because it's the only sector across shipping, uh, I mean, the ocean going shipping, that it's B2C instead of the other sectors being more business to business. But I, I, I fully understand what you say, uh, Osher. Uh, your thoughts, barriers and drivers, what you've seen? Yeah. Again, one step back before we, we dive in. We look at, you know, when I speak to people outside of the industry, um, I, I often describe to them that uh, a, a ship is not a, just a vehicle, a car that needs to move from point A to point B, right? It is an industrial facility. There are people working 24 seven operating cranes, engines, right? Working on board the vessel. It's an industrial facility. And in that regard, let's compare it to, let's say, a, you know, take a hundred million dollar factory and a hundred million dollar vessel and say, all right, what, what, what is different in, this, in these two pictures, right? Then there's a lot. Just focusing on the challenges here, the biggest difference that is very noticeable, the factory is on land, right? It is connected, you can access it, the ship, uh, the, the, the factory manager can actually be there, right? And 
it's also, you know, it's connected, right? Today on land, every facility is connected. You can upload data, you can consume it any way you want. And that is not the case with a ship that by definition is at sea, remote, right? It's a remote disconnected asset that the support for the master, for the chief engineer is far away. You're limited with the connectivity. You're limited with the, uh, even the ability to get the data. So, that's you know that that's about the the barrier. I connect to what you said that when you talk about the main driver, there are many smaller drivers. But what is the one key driver? And the key driver is the profitability, is the opex, is the overall performance in that sense. And when there is a will, there is a way, right? So we've spent a lot of time, you know, articulating, highlighting the economic value of bringing those solutions. I don't care about technology. It's a solution to you as a ship owner, as a ship manager. And this is what's behind the scenes. Sure, there's computer vision, there's patents on communication protocols and so on. So just to say how, you know, in terms of the, that's that's the, the, the driver. Let, let me stop here. I'll have a lot to say about how we actually solve it, but we can do it later. Okay. Katenina, mm -hmm. uh, your thoughts, barriers and drivers uh, for these, you know, innovations uh, that we may see. Yeah, so I think the main barrier is the opening the minds of people. So <laughs> because uh, people don't believe, you know, when I go and tell them that, you know, this is uh, something that is a good idea, they always say, oh, it's not possible. And then I have to show them a demonstration or I have to show them an example where that technology has worked, uh, where we have done small projects, you know, on ships, and then they start believing. So uh, this barrier is the disbelief. So like you said, people ask only about OPEX or CAPEX, but they don't see the, the cost saved uh, from maybe dealing with the accident, you know, uh, because that is far better, far bigger, you know. So, so it's, I think, better to be prepared uh, with uh, a more safer ship, uh, have preventive measures, and uh, simply humans cannot match the, the efficiency of machines. So uh, there are certain routine repetitive tasks which are just not suited for humans. They are better done by machines. They are better done by new technology which incorporates machine learning, artificial intelligence. And uh, these, uh, I think, are going to be, the, this technology was never there. And the drivers are going to be when uh, people see the benefits, tangible benefits in reduction of accidents, increasing of the operational efficiency and in, in the long term, cost reduction in, say, better maintenance, preventive maintenance being done. Uh, so those are going to be the drivers where case studies will show. So trials on the ships will show that it's possible to implement this technology and get these tangible benefits. Thank you. And Pauline, uh, your thoughts with respect to barriers and drivers? Uh, other than you know insurance premiums and you know yeah no no that's a, that, that's not really a barrier or a driver really it's a, it's a, it's a side matter isn't it? It, it it's cost you know it, at the end of the day it's cost and the it, it, the cost is both a key driver and a key barrier and it, it is it, as Osho and, and Mauricio both made, made uh, and they not everybody said you have to make the case for the cost saving. Now, for me, one of the key drivers is downtime. Nobody wants incidents anymore in their business. They don't want that friction, the hassle, the cost that comes with even, the, you know, even the smallest incident these days. So, you know, if you really, if you're a tech company, you want to focus on those incidents that you might be able to help prevent and what the costs are to the organization in terms of, you know, people resource, money resource, increased insurance premiums, whatever it might be, and, and, and really focus on that as, as, as something, as a selling point for your product. The other thing that I, I've seen tech providers be, I would say, quite weak at in many cases is considering the human element and the people, designing it for the people, but then especially the onboarding process you know, what is there to reassure the people that this thing is not going to take over their lives, that they aren't going to be sacked or disciplined because it's there, you know, and that they get proper training so that they know how to get best use of it and know how it's going to really benefit them and benefit their company. You know, and I think those are, those are the two key things I, I would say for, you know, to, to tech companies. It, it, it is that focus on 
what your benefits are and try and put a cost on them. That's the return investment and focus on the end users, the people. Because if you put it on board a ship and the crew don't like it and they give five fi bad feedback to the company, it's dead. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, now, I would like to, to change topic uh, to something uh, a little bit different. Um, speaking of these days, we've seen, uh, we've, we've hear psychologists saying that you shouldn't compare yourself with others, but you should compare yourself uh, with the, your yesterday self, to put it in that sense. So we all agree that we have to move forward as an industry, and the industry has a certain, let's say, uh, hesitation across adopting innovation across a number of issues we are very resistant to change as an industry for a number of reasons so i would like to ask your thoughts on what lessons have we learned either from our past and i would specifically like to point out the issue of the erp introduction and implementation across the industry i still recall my good friend gian piero soncini a leader in the software segment stating 20 years ago that a, a ship operator with more than 20 ships could not do it without some sort of integrated software and people may be laughing maybe 20 years ago but now this is the reality mm. and i would also like to add to the mix mm. the issue of ECDIS. Uh, we've seen a number of discussion it took a number of years from the discussion to the imo to the uh, facing timeline through implementation and where we stand today. So I would like to hear your thoughts on what lessons have we learned either from our past or maybe with other similar safety intensive industries. I don't want to hear about the nuclear sector or the television sector or anything else. I would like to stay with the safety intensive industries, maybe from offshore, maybe something like that. But I would like to hear your thoughts on what have we learned and what should we learn uh, and maybe consider as we need to move uh, forward so i would like to uh, start with Osir here Osir, your thoughts yeah uh, excellent question so i think the the example you gave about egg is, is an interesting one um, and also so i've I spent again 10 years right uh, navigating vessels um spending those years in the, in the bridge of a, of a ship and so I can say, you know, so when, when I was sailing at the time, you know, you had all the charts, right, that you had to manually update on a weekly basis with the Admiralty and so on, right? And then the ECDIS came and then you had to have a redundancy for the regulator to say, you know what, if you have both separating units, you can get rid of the the hundreds of kilos of uh, charts that you have on the, you're carrying with you, as well as the intensive uh, uh, work that you need to do on a weekly basis to update these charts. Another example, if I may, is the AIS introduction. I think it was uh, January 2007 that it became mandatory that all ships carry the AIS. The resistance within the industry was not small at the time. Why do we need to know where the vessels are, are, are every, at every given moment? And today, the number of vessels, uh, the number of companies, sorry, that are providing value, the number of, you know, I don't think there's a single ship owner today or a ship manager that are not deriving value from the introduction of this uh, piece of information that what we say previously unavailable data from the from the from the ships and so I talk about our perspective we are bringing visual information right we created patents on delivering terabytes and terabytes of the visual content into to shore that allows for that so all of a sudden you have again previously unavailable data that you can see how it is being used in other industries and you say now the value in our perspective is even greater because of the aspect of that remote disconnected asset and how do we take that and make it right now as an economic driver to uh, for adoption with the owners and the managers. And then also in the future, when you talk about visually detected automatic logs to reduce the burden, to not need doing the updates. So it's a similar trend. And I think there are a lot of uh, uh, lessons that can be learned there. Thank you. And Captain Nina, your thoughts? Yeah, hi. so uh, with regard to lessons learned, so I think one of the biggest advantages that we have seen from the adoption of modern technology uh, is the reduction of the human error element, because many of those tasks 
so like Osha mentioned about charts, EGDIS, uh, we talked about ERP. Uh, so wherever there was there were failures because of uh, incorrect data collection or um, say maybe not connecting charts properly, uh, suddenly now we have a scenario where you uh, the, the systems do it better for you. So data collection is much better done through ERP systems. Uh, data is more accessible, readily uh, available. Uh, report generation is improved. So the crew can focus on more productive tasks. And uh, the same thing in the case of EGDIS is that you uh, reduce the element, the risk of say uncorrected charts, uh, encountering navigational hazards. So again, you're increasing the safety and uh, you are delegating things that can be delegated to machines while still retaining the human element for more productive tasks. So we are not replacing humans, but we are actually changing what the humans did. So previously humans did a lot of manual work. Now they are monitoring the output from machines from uh, data collection devices. And I think this is one of the major changes. And as we see the efficiency that it brings to the shipping industry, then the acceptance of this technology will improve. Thank you. Uh, Colin, your thoughts? Uh ECT has been mentioned a couple of times, and I think it's a very good example of where technology can learn a lesson. The introduction of ECTUS was nearly 20 years ago. And last year, there was a report, joint report by the Danish MAIB and the UK MAIB around ECTUS use or ECTUS misuse. It might be a bit better to say. Uh, and, and, and they basically said that even after 20 years, ECTUS was still in its implementation phase. Now, that's shocking. That, that I mean, for the industry, that is shocking. And they went on to say there was a significant mismatch between the intention of the performance standards and the way the system was being used. So that clearly speaks to the onboarding, the training, how the ECTUS itself presents the information. Yeah, it's a bit too complex. There's lots of different systems out there. They're all doing slightly different displays. That makes things very complex for the user. Uh, and, and, you know, one of the most basic things was the use of automated alarms and user's confidence in them was low. So they would switch them off, which is taking away a key safety feature of that new piece of technology. So the focus for me for tech companies is not just their tech, it is how it is delivered to the people on board. That's a real hard lesson that the industry has learned to its cost because there have been lots of ECTUS assistant incidents and accidents that have cost a lot of money. So that hard lesson should be taken on board by the industry uh, and by the tech providers. Absolutely. Uh, Maurizio, your thoughts? Um, I'm Inspired by OSHA, I like to take a giant leap back <laughs> and, and looking at, um, you know, one, one particular thing is the tipping point of adoption of tech. Now, I think many of us are old enough to remember when cars didn't have airbags, right? And it was kind of right, you know, yeah, maybe I'll get one with airbag, cost a bit more. Now, no one will ever consider buying a car without, without airbags. So, the adoption of that tech, it's just an example, reached a tipping point where everybody must have it. It's just not, not justifiable not to have it. Now, think a situation, uh, translating this to maritime where, so let's take fatigue measurement right, right now, fatigue measurement. So fast forward a few years, it might be totally unacceptable by a ship owner not to have measured fatigue of their people if there is an accident. So there is an accident, investigation the terms is fatigue and you say well you know what we didn't measure fatigue it's just an example but the point is that when that tipping point is reached people will adopt the technology no matter what because it's what everybody expects and so that's a reflection uh, on on the maritime market where are those tipping points for certain technology <laughs> it might be computer vision at some point or sure right where you say it's unacceptable not to have visual analytics on a ship it's just ridiculous not to have it right 
So obviously we are not at that point yet, um, but those tipping points are real and they happen every time for every successful piece of tech we are using, Zoom is an example, they happen. And so uh, my, my call to action to industry, it's really keep an eye open for these tipping points. And uh, when we find them, it's, it's you know, let's, let's throw the kitchen sink at it because they can make a huge difference. Okay. Um, thank you, Mauricio. Uh, now, I would like to go and uh, have as a, as a quick follow up to what we discussed. I would like to ask if we should uh, uh, introduce or maybe what sort of measure and KPIs maybe we should use in order to monitor success with respect to say technology integration or implementation. Any thoughts on this? Maybe maybe quick thoughts because we are talking about adopting innovation. Any sort of KPIs? We talked about uh, profitability. We all understand that Conlin correctly pointed out barrier and driver is the same. It's about costs here. And someone has to balance these costs and see where where they stand. Absolutely. Any other KPI, maybe any other metric, any other thought of how should we as an industry measure the success of this innovation? Uh, Katenina, as, as a quick follow up to what we discussed, Katenina, if you have any quick thoughts on this. Yeah, so I think one of the one of the indicators that nobody looks about looks at is the crew mental uh, wellness. So today we we have, uh, as Osha said earlier, the ships are getting larger, the crew is still uh, the same, and the tasks of people are getting increased because of uh, more documentation, follow up on inspections. Now we have charters inspections, port state inspections, ride ship inspections, and all of them require responses. And the crew gets uh, stressed out with this. And when they are stressed out, they can't think straight. That's when they are primed to make mistakes. And instead of that, if we give them tools like ERP systems or other systems, which will reduce their burden of collecting data, of logging data, recording data, then we actually uh, we are actually protecting their mental wellness. We are reducing their stress. So I think that is one thing that we should look at because these are people who are working for us. And we, we actually do think about this. We ask people this all the time and we ask them their, uh, their burden, their, their load, uh, their workload. And then whatever we do on the ship. So when I implement something on the ship, it has two main reasons. It should be beneficial to the crew. It should be beneficial for my office staff. And that those are very, very good reasons to implement something like this because eventually it will improve productivity and safety. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Nina. Uh, Colin, you any, any thoughts on metrics and KPIs maybe? No, I'd agree, I'd agree with Nina. I think you have to set KPIs based on different user groups. So what do the crew and board want? What do the office staff want? And ultimately, what do the principals want? Yeah. And if you can hit the KPIs in each of those areas with that piece of tech, you'll have a successful piece of tech. What those KPIs are will differ because the tech solutions differ, but you have to look at all those user groups and set KPIs for each. Absolutely. Uh, Mauricio? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously there are KPIs at company level, ship level, etc. But I'd like to focus on KPIs at industry level for the adoption of uh, safety technologies. And uh, so for example, I don't think saved lives and accidents is an actionable KPI in the short term because it takes a long time for tech to, to show an impact. Eventually, yes, but it's not really actionable. So I'm a big fan of proxy KPIs that measure very precisely the level of adoption of technologies that we know could save lives, right? So if you take, for example, confined spaces, um, now, one possible KPI is a proxy KPI of eventually reducing accidents is how many confined space inspections are done by robots and drones in industry. This year is 5%, maybe in five years is 20%. And you can almost draw a conclusion that accidents will be reduced by risk elimination. It's a simple, simple mathematics, right? So it would be fantastic if industry started to map what these proxy KPIs of tech adoption would be so collectively, perhaps somebody could start tracking level of adoption. Um, and if we get those, then we can collectively, I guess, uh, maybe 
push a bit harder in areas where technology adoption should move a bit faster, etc. So these are very actionable because they can actually be measured year, year in and year out with industry service and so on. Okay, thank you, Osher. Oh. Yes, I, I really appreciate you know what my my colleagues um, to the call said um, specifically around the different users and the different KPIs and what are, what matters uh, to them the most. So I'll give you one example. We recently brought in one of the largest container liners in the world um, to the platform to Fleet Vision, and in that process, we've done a survey on forty of their own vessels, right? And in the survey included two slides on what the system, the visual analytics, you know, uh, that we bring in Fleet Vision does. And then two questions. Do you see value in visual analytics on board the vessels from the crew? Yeah, that was done through the union. And secondly, do you want this on board? 39 out of 40 vessels said yes, most definitely, right? 39 out of 40. It's, a, it's as someone that established this company with this, in knowing that this will be on, a, you know, in com coming years on every vessel, this was a surprise at this time, right? So for the, and we see when we, we come to vessels, we deploy kits with spare ca their cameras and also spare cameras, right? That's the uh, sensors that we get the data. And each kit includes additional uh, uh, sensors, additional cameras, and the crew takes it and installs it on their own kind of accord in different locations and asking for more because it gives them the visibility. So that's on the crew side, how well it is being uh, adopted there and their KPIs in terms of what do I need to do on a daily basis, right? On the office side, we go back to the barrier and to where there's will, there's a way. So the main KPI that we've mentioned is the profitability, the OPEX, right? So with that sense, we've been through our work with previous, you know, with current customers and previous work over the last couple of years, we've been able to show that there's ability to reduce over 40% of the losses that are happening from maintenance related issues, from operational related issues, and from external hazards, whether it is drug smuggling, malpractice of surveyors, and all that. The second, which is also important on the economic side is increasing the productivity, reducing the time at port, identifying bottlenecks. All of these are measurable items that on a manufacturing facility here on land, you, you have. It's, a, it's part of the, the routine. We're now bringing it into the maritime as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, I would like as a, as a quick, before we, 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 let's say, conclude our discussion with the final question I have, in mind, I would like to ask you, from your perspective, what sort of benefits has your organization or clients or industry realized so far with respect to integration and implementation of safety technology? I would like to hear, let's say, what is happening in real life. I would like to hear your thoughts, uh, starting with uh, Colin. Well, I live in insurance. I don't live in ships in real life, Apple. But so, 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 I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was thinking I, for clients. So, yeah. Again, what what sort of uh, you know real life improvements have you are you hearing? I mean, well, if 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 we go to fires, well, what we're starting to see is a lot of thought and implementation of, of different ways of detection. Um, so with every fire, early detection is key. The earlier you detect it, the earlier you can try and fight it. So there we're seeing visual technology, um, other sensor technology, gas sensing technology, uh, technologies that are embedded into either the deck or, or the deck head uh, that, that, that can uh, allow those uh, fires to be detected more quickly. Uh, in the container industry, more and more sensors are going within the containers, particularly where, where the cargo is, is, is sensitive or, or maybe a, a, a problematic cargo. So those technologies over time are going to deliver real safety benefits to, to the sectors that, that are adopting them because they'll be able to better spot the fire. There, there's also technologies that have developed, some aren't soft tech, some are hard tech that actually better help you fight the fire, you know, uh, technologies that puncture containers more or less automatically and can flood the container. Uh, so if it's high up in the stack that the crew, you know, just de deploy the technology and it, it punctures the container and floods it. So there, there, there's lots of, lots of hard and soft tech out there 
that, that is, is starting to change how industry operates. Uh, and we are seeing owners being open to that. And that's, that's, a, that's a good thing. Uh, Maurizio. Um, I'm not a maritime um, person, I'm a technologist. Um, and uh, uh, what I'm observing here um, is um, essentially a, a, an increased awareness um, of the potential of technology. Okay. So, examples, I mean, Osha, I love your, your examples, you know, these beautiful examples show don't tell right uh, this example and your congratulations on your recent fundraise by the way that's another example of uh, you know an investor believing in the potential of the technology and there are several examples like this so these examples um, are actually raising um, tide okay so everybody's starting to feel like well tech can really help here and I love them. And that's what we actually do quite a lot of uh, safety tech accelerator by promoting proof points uh, of adoption of technology. But they really matter because the moment you raise the tide for everybody and they have more appetite to trial things, then adoption moves much faster. And so this, um, this uh, changed awareness is one of the things I've observed. Uh, and it's, uh, I guess, a benefit of an event like this, talking about examples and some success stories out there they can start talking about. Yeah, that would be my main takeaway here. Yeah, okay. raising the tide. Okay. Thank you. Also, uh, I think that, you know, value creation, we've, from, from day one, in, as we established the company, value creation for the vessels, uh, for the crew, for the ship owners and for the ship managers, um, for our customers, is what we've put on our flag, right? As a, <clears throat> we're we not a technology company in the sense that the technology does not matter, right? It serves a purpose. We're not developing something, so we have a very nice to have uh, 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 technology solution. The idea here is to provide value to operations. And for that, I think the best example, you know, I'll let the numbers speak by themselves. When we have ship owners that are opening their books in the last five years, right, of every reported incident. So forget all of those that are, have been unreported, which the number is significantly bigger. And they say, when we look five years back, 42% of all losses, incidents that we've had are targeted with what the system is doing, right? This is the value to them. When they look at a tanker example, and they say, when I look at the unreported stoppages now, when I see how I can support the tank cleaning and reduce it by almost half of the time, right? That is the value to them. So over 40% of you know, reduced losses, 8% in increased productivity and profitability on cargo operations, and that shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder experience that you are working ship and shore, right? Chief officer with the superintendent or the chief engineer and everybody's on the same platform, that is the value uh, that the system is bringing from our experience and what we are focused on. Thank you. Katenina, uh, your thoughts? Yeah, I would like to come back to the crew. So, uh, you know, we started uh, some initiatives where we brought digitalization, uh, digitization of certificates. We did solar power projects on the ships. And with, with each new adoption of technology, we taught the crew something different. We, uh, we expanded their horizons and we created, I think, more safety awareness and awareness of the possibilities among them. So crew, which was deeply, uh, you know, uh, complacent or, uh, you know, they were deep, deep rooted in their ways. They have suddenly started seeing uh, the new ways of doing things. They have started realizing the possibilities. And we have also seen a reduction in the number of accidents. So, so fatalities have dropped like drastically. A uh, number of accidents also have dropped. We still encourage the reporting of near misses and even those, they are trivial, you know. Uh, so, so what we see is that just by this additional, so we have changed our training methods. We have not spoken about training, but we have changed, we have brought uh, modern technology into the training methods, uh, enhanced it to make it more audiovisual, group discussion, reflective learning. And through this, I think we have enriched the crew. And by doing that, we have made our ship safer because uh, better trained or better 
the informed crew is always going to work better for you. And I see this as one of the major changes and we, I would like to continue this journey of teaching the crew more to empower them and to, uh, to even invite suggestions from them, you know, on what, what can we do to help to make their lives better. Okay, thank you. Now, as we would like to conclude our uh, <clears throat> discussion today, I would like to uh, discuss our, uh, let's say, last topic. I would like to hear it from you. What do you think should be the next steps and where do you see the industry directed with respect to safety, technology, integration and implementation? Any ideas, next steps and where do you see the industry uh, directed? Maurizio, you are the, the right person to start uh, this one. Where do you see the industry going? What are the next steps we should adopt more? Of these safety technologies, well, of course, and I'm, you know, I could talk about collaboration and more pilots and so forth. But I like to to pick on one, um, you know, most a call to action is for industry to be a bit more explicit about it. It needs um, so uh, articulate those use cases where tech can make a difference much, much better. Uh, now, OSHA has been uh, very kind to to share the statistics. You know, thirty nine out of forty ship said they wanted visual analytics. Where are stats like that in industry? Where are they? That people say, wow, okay. I mean, people people really like this stuff. Um, hopefully not a competitor to ship in. But if you see my point, my point is that industry was a bit clearer about what they need, then the entrepreneurs will go after it. And then you have investment and you have brain power and all those wonderful chemistry that will drive adoption. I see industry, uh, as we covered earlier, a bit like, yeah, it's not going to work. Yeah, cameras, no, come on. We don't do that kind of stuff. And that needs to change, OK? There is so much knowledge about what, what technology can do, but it's kind of hidden and almost not quite articulated and promoted. And by the way, uh, call to action, if, if some of the listeners have some ideas and stories like that, please let us know because we can then translate them into programs for Safety Tech Accelerator. But the point is that be more explicit, uh, sort of advertise your needs better and then things will happen. Thank you. Uh, Osha. I think we all recognize that the industry the, the, the stakeholders across the, 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 the industry identify and understand that there are new solutions that are, are bringing value to the, the market. We, as service providers to the industry, should remember that at the end of the day, the, the resources, even within the office, are limited. And so the tools that we are providing should save work there as well and be able to communicate and collaborate and share the information right so from our perspective there's no need to have multiple monitors if the system know how to provide value in that so it's a combination of and it's, it's a natural progression of the events as you may have seen in other industries over the years right there are multiple now you know initiatives looking at fuel efficiency and the CII, and then now starting with the OPEX, and we're starting multiple avenues. And then at the end of the day, it's one ship, one crew on board, one uh, uh, the crew uh, ashore, right? The, the, the shore fares and the ability to actually deliver value in a concise and efficient way to improve the, the, the performance. That's, uh, that's where it's headed. Okay, thank you. Uh, Katanina. Yeah, I think uh, the industry is poised for change right now with the available uh, choice of emerging technology that uh, is available. I think this is the right time for people to start doing projects. And um, through those projects, there will be acceptance because when people see uh, small projects, pilot projects succeeding, then they will believe in the technology. And uh, we also have to go towards, so with the adoption of technology comes also the need to understand this. And we have to talk about reskilling people. So we cannot use the same skills that we have had over, over the past because those were different categories. Uh, today, there are different positions coming up which require very specified knowledge. We have already seen this in terms of today, we have ME engines. So we require special, specific training for ME engines. Not just any engineer can be posted on those ships. So same way as we go forward, when you're adopting uh, more data-driven uh, solutions, then you need somebody to make sure that those systems run, that uh, we can actually progress to smart ships, 
which communicate with shore and reduce the burden or reduce the uncertainty of whether the crew has reported something or not. The ship should uh, ideally uh, be a transparent entity to the managing people from shore. So we should be able to know what is happening on the ship, remove the uncertainty. So solutions like what uh, uh, ShipIn provides, Fleet Vision, it, uh, it cuts through the barrier, you know, the uncertainty. So there's transparency, owners, managers, class, uh, we are all seeing the same picture. We are seeing the same uh, accidents uh, in the same perspective. So there is no uh, doubting about how this accident took place. Accident investigations become much easier. And uh, I think there is also more trust uh, between uh, the shore and the ship. And I think this is the way we have to go towards uh, uh, to, to, to make this a truly vibrant industry. And I think... Okay, thank you. Colin, your thoughts as we are looking forward to conclude this presentation? Yeah, I'll not be, I'll not be long, Apple. I think uh, if we come back to costs, if technology provides value and it provides companies with a competitive advantage, it will therefore be adopted by other companies subsequent to that. So we'll see a similar to Liz Truss's trickle-down economics, we'll see trickle-down technology, and it will eventually suffuse the whole industry, and it will come to a ship near you. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, uh, I would like to thank you all very much. I would like to thank you for the discussion and the points made. I would like to thank our viewers. I would like to uh, thank uh, Shipping Systems, who is the sponsor of this uh, webinar. Uh, and looking forward to seeing you in one of our future uh, uh, discussion and webinars and, and, and events. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank, Thank you for fun. a wonderful discussion. Thank you, Thank Bye -bye. you Colin, Maurizio, Inad. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.